All right, so last week we watched Snow White and the Seven Dwarves to dig back into the history of Disney, and I finished the episode saying, like, all right, that's enough of Disney, now we'll move on to something else. Turns out that's not enough of Disney. I thought of another Disney movie that I want to watch, but uh, I got a story behind this one of, like, why, you know, what, what the deal is with this one. So, uh, and I mean, I'll ask you if you've heard of it, but I guarantee you have not. It's called The Black Cauldron. Um, don't think so. So the way I heard of the Black Cauldron is, uh, you remember the computers we had back in the 80s when we first got, you guys got your first personal computers for uh, your law office, and uh, they had those green monochrome screens yep. and stuff. And uh, on those old computers, the best games were the Sierra games, King's Quest, Space Quest, you know, those were the best. And there was one called the Black Cauldron, and I'll just show you real quick. This is what it looked like. So you can see it's one of those games, like King's Quest, like Space Quest, you know, it's just little blocky man walks around, you have an adventure, whatever. So we never had that one, which is weird because we had most of them. We had Police Quest and, you know, all that crap. And, uh, and they were awesome. I loved those games. So I was always like, what is this Black Cauldron one? What the heck is that? And when I looked it up in whatever way I did in the 80s, I don't even know, you know, magazines or whatever, just asking people, it was apparently based on a Disney cartoon. So I was like, all right, I guess, but why? You know, I was born in 79, this movie The Black Cauldron came out in 1985. If this is a Disney cartoon, how come I've never seen it? And on top of that, how come no one I know has ever seen it? You know, it was just this mysterious Disney movie that I knew existed because there's a whole video game about it, but that's the only evidence <laughs> is this video game that I also had never played. So I just realized because my mind was on Disney a little after watching Snow White, you know, now it's decades later. Now I'm a middle-aged man, and I still don't know anyone who ever talks about The Black Cauldron. So I was like, what the hell is this movie? That's why I thought we should do that movie this week, because what is the story of this bizarre phantom Disney film that nobody has ever seen, and it almost seems like it never existed? So, where are my notes? Because it turns out there is a reason for this. So, The Black Cauldron is a 1985 dark fantasy adventure film. It's the 25th Disney animated film. It's loosely based on The Chronicles of Prydain by Lloyd Alexander, which were a series of children's novels that came out in the 1960s. Uh, and basically, the short version of the story is, the film was released summer 1985. It cost $44 million, which was the most expensive animated film of all time at that point, and it made... 21 million dollars. So it lost 20 million dollars <laughs> for Disney Studios. So during production it had a severe editing process, particularly for its climactic sequence, which proved to be disturbing to children during a test screening. So the newly appointed Walt Disney Studios chairman, a guy named Jeffrey Katzenberg, ordered those scenes to be cut, fearing that uh, they would alienate the audience. Even still, it was the first Disney film to be rated PG rather than G, parental guidance, which in Canada, we don't use those, those uh, same ratings, but you know, that's, it's pretty easy to tell what they mean though. G is general, PG is parental, parental. guidance. Yeah, it's like, it's a little bit too much. You can't just, which is clearly weird for a Disney movie, you know, even though Snow White had the creepy, some actual very creepy stuff, skeletons and stuff. And also too, that was 1937. Right. And there weren't a whole lot of parental controls over any of that stuff at that time because it was all new. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure those ratings did not exist back in those days. But still, yeah, it, it seems crazy that they cut stuff out of this movie and it still got PG. So that's, uh, it's weird. I'm like... Except in the 1980s, there was a whole lot of that control type of stuff going on, which 50 years before wouldn't have existed. Yeah, that's true. Even if you go through like horror movie stuff, um, horror movies from the 70s are so much more grim and so much grosser and more unrated feeling than the 80s. Like when you look back at Freddy and Jason movies, they're really silly. They're kind of dumb. Where if you watch 70s movies like I Spit on Your Grave and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's like this looks like a snuff film. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> uh, so not only though was it the first Disney film to be rated PG, it was also the first Disney film to use computer animated imagery. So that could be interesting just to see what that was like in 1985 because based on the state of that video game, computers, you know, they had a long ways to go. 
But being the most expensive animated film ever made at the time, it was a box office bomb, putting the future of Disney's animation department in jeopardy. And because of its commercial failure, Disney did not release the film on home media until 1998. So uh, that explains why I never saw it, is that, you know, I was saying last week how it was tough to see Disney stuff anyway. You had to hope to catch it on TV or during an occasional theatrical re-release, or they would very occasionally open the vault and let you purchase Disney movies. But you couldn't even buy this one. That's why nobody I knew had it, because it didn't exist on videotape until 98, which at that point, I was listening to Korn and Marilyn Manson. I had other things to do <laughs> than watch old Disney stuff. So it just, I never even had the opportunity to see this thing. It just completely passed me by. Which, I, again, I just find that a weird decision. Like, if you lost that much money, wouldn't you want to recoup some money by putting it out on on the home market, but they were like ashamed of it. They just wanted to pretend this thing didn't exist. One difficulty is that the original source material features over 30 characters. So yeah, these, these books, <laughs> cramming them down into a Disney movie, that wasn't easy to do. And, uh, and like I was saying, there's these scary parts that Katzenberg forced them to take out. You can find some like animatics on YouTube of like these zombie guys like melting and <laughs> it's, it's pretty grim. And, uh, I don't know, I mean, I have to assume this movie is, uh, you know, I, I can't put my expectations too high. It sounds like it was kind of uh, a mess in several ways. Like, the whole thing just seemed like a tough project that didn't really come together. However, when I was looking up stuff about it, uh, there's fans who still pine for the version without the 12 minutes of footage that apparently was taken out, insisting that if that 12 minutes had stayed in, it would have saved the film. Which, I, mean, I doubt it, Possibly. but you never know. Hey, you never know, though. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's weird, because I used to always side on the side of the creators. Like, if if the studio executives want you to make cuts and the people involved in the movie want to keep stuff in, surely the people on the ground working on it every day know better. But I don't know, I've come to find it's more 50-50 than that. Sometimes people just get lost in the forest and don't know what the heck they're doing, and it, it does help to have an outside sometimes, person. Sometimes, but done, sometimes you get the executives removing stuff. They're thinking not of creativity or what people might um, enjoy if they had a little bit of freedom of thought to think about it. They're thinking more of the dollar at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, the sense I got, I mean, I don't really know. I just read one Wikipedia page about this movie, but it did feel like this Katzenberg guy, like he went on to do uh, Shrek and stuff, and like he's pretty well-liked. It doesn't seem like he was just some oaf who came in and messed things up. It seems more like he got given this this movie based on these five novels that got cobbled down into a, just a, you know, like that's at the best of times, that's going to be rough. And then he's got this test screening where kids are blatting their heads off because it's so scary. And he's like, this is a Disney movie. <laughs> like, I feel like he was put in a pretty tough situation. So, I mean, 12 minutes is a lot to cut, but I don't know. It, it does seem naive to think that just like, oh, that was the whole, if only those 12 minutes, but who knows? I don't know. But maybe those 12 minutes were the thing that would have joined it all together maybe by taking those out maybe it's disjoint who knows maybe yeah. it's fully disjointed now because they took out 12 minutes that is quite a bit of time yeah yeah so who knows so anyway i thought though that was an interesting enough story that uh we could yeah. do one more week of disney and and i just want to fill in this gap in my in my life I'm, and it explains why because yeah it's just like there's a Certainly Disney movies that are more famous than other ones, you know, maybe the rescuers down under got viewed a few less times than 101 Dalmatians or whatever. But this one, like I said, like, it just made no sense for a kid who grew up in the 80s to not even know one person who saw this movie. <laughs> and that's why, because they just buried it. They're like, pretend that never happened when we won't even put it out until it's, you know, 13 years later. <laughs> what, a, what a weird lost Disney film. So, uh, yeah. Well, let's so, watch it. Yeah. I, I, it. It's definitely got an interesting background story to it that it's not like, you know, kind of, usually you think of a lot of Disney stuff as kind of schmaltzy. Right. This doesn't sound like that's on that road at all. Yeah, like at the very least, even if it is kind of a disjointed plot, this is what I'm presuming. I, I've presumed wrong many times on this podcast, but I'm presuming it's probably going to be a little tough to follow. And if they really did have to combine that much story into one little thing, probably not going to work out that well but there's enough other stuff just the pure fact that it's this movie that almost killed disney and that it's the first pg one and the creepy parts of snow white were by far the best parts so it this will at least have some creepy parts and uh 
and the 1985 computer graphics now that every animated thing ever i think the only people still drawing animation stuff are japan and even there mostly computer at this point so to see the very first computer and i mean north america we're all computer pixar and even disney movies nowadays they're all computer so uh, this is where that started so it's got a good story behind it and uh and now it makes sense why this mysterious film essentially just for my whole childhood just didn't exist I will say that I do think if I had this on a VHS tape as a kid, I think I would have liked it because we've learned through Robin Hood and Snow White that uh, I only remember the cool parts of those movies as a kid. I, I blanked out everything else. So the evil guy's creepy castle full of weird brigands and stuff, that's all I would have remembered. <laughs> so I would have remembered this as being a cool movie. But yeah, as an adult, I got no time for this one. As an adult, <laughs> it's a piece of boring crap. <laughs> yeah. And even when we got to the big scene everybody talks about online, the uh, the cauldron born, and we dug up on YouTube uh, a kind of recreation as well as they could of uh, just the cut part. But it literally was just a guy whose skin melted off his body. <laughs> it was not that big a deal. And then later, the villain's skin melted off his body anyway. So uh, these cuts, I don't, I don't know, they don't really make sense. But yeah, it's just basically, uh, again, who knows, the extra 12 minutes, maybe it would have made the story more coherent, but I get the feeling, because it's so incoherent all the way through, that the extra 12 minutes just would have been extra 12 minutes. It just would have made the movie drag more. Because it is just like, yeah, here's some new scenes, here's some new people, some stuff happening, and just none of it feels like it matters. It's Terribly to... disjointed. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to have fabulous animation but you've got to have a, a storyline that connects one minute the pig's there next minute the pig's not there uh oh let's throw in some firefly people let's th and, and and watch them interact let's throw in those old witches and have to listen to them banter on for a while i mean all you need to do is just show them get their purpose out there get them do what they're going to do and move on and even i mean uh, it must be weird adapting stuff i got to assume the magical pig who can see the future is just part of the story but uh they really do take it for granted that you're gonna care about these characters and i just didn't in fact i was kind of actively pushed away because i just found the uh the pig with the big eyelashes and the big disney face that is like i just don't like it i find that just creepy when they like really feminize a random pig but then beyond that it's just like, oh, the pig. How is this whole story revolving around a pig? It's just stupid. <laughs> well, I didn't mind that so much. But what I did mind is, uh, uh, okay, so they said that this would just be too violent for, for children. I don't think the violence was the problem. I think the problem was the storyline itself. It was just all over the place. You know, as I've said many times, don't dumb down things for kids and just don't throw anything out there that's totally disjointed. Kids aren't that stupid. They'd be bored with this, too. It's like, oh, for God's sake, will you get on with it? Yeah, and the creepy parts definitely didn't seem any more creepy than uh, Snow White. You know, it's just there was more of them. There and were... more of it and more of it. It just went on and on and on. Yeah, get your creep, get your creep stuff out there, establish it, and move on. Because you can be more effective with that creepy stuff if you just throw it out there, get it over with fast and move on, other than elaborate on it and keep it going on and on and on, that actually lose, makes it lose its effectiveness as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that one skeleton in, in the evil uh, stepmother's you know, basement was a lot creepier in Snow White than a big pile of skeletons in this one. And the cauldron, actually, in this one, when it was doing its stuff and went on and on and on, that was not as effective as the cauldron scene in Snow White where the queen is turning into the evil woman. And those colors that just come out, and it, it you might be looking at that for 30 seconds, maybe? But that is extremely effective. This stuff just was like, oh, well, let's throw a bunch of colors out there and a bunch of loud noises and... 
Yeah. Bunch yeah. of swirling stuff in the cauldron. You know, throw, throw some skeletons in there. And it's certainly like it wasn't bad. Like again, like I said, as a kid, I think I would have I would have remembered it fondly just because of the creepy, you know, visuals. But I mean, it's essentially Lord, uh, what's it, Castle Grey Skull or whatever, Skeletor from He Man. It's not so different from any of that. But also, it really is. I mean, I'm sure it really is nothing like the books because it's just by the numbers Disney. Like everybody looks exactly the same as they looked in Robin Hood, the exact same kind of style. We brought up Sword in the Stone. We just watched a trailer real quick. It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, isn't that similar? That one's from the 60s. It looks basically the same. And then, yeah, again, like you're saying, you go all the way back to the 30s. It hasn't really changed that much. So it does seem like the biggest trouble is just the budget. That's the only reason this was really a failure. And if they hadn't expanded everything, it probably wouldn't have cost them $40 million to make it. If they'd shortened down all those scenes to half of what they were... They probably could have done it for $20 million, which yeah. is what they made on it, and then they would have broke even. Although then it'd be a 45-minute movie. So <laughs> yeah, true enough. But, uh, but I mean, I, I couldn't really determine what happened because the other movies of the era were all like $14 million and stuff. Like, they would have turned a profit. It does seem like it, it was just behind-the-scenes trouble of, like, they had to get rid of a director, they brought in another guy, they started working on it in the late 70s, it didn't get finished till the mid-80s. Like, like, it wasn't... 40 million dollars that you see on the screen it was just 40 million dollars of behind the scenes uh, bureaucracy problems but yeah it does seem like that's really the only reason this was such a huge failure because I didn't care for it I'll certainly never watch it again I thought it was quite bland but it wasn't bad either it was fine it just it was okay but when you cut to the video game and we watched it in fast (laughs) motion there it was there was the entire movie in about Two minutes. Yeah, it was kind of funny to just watch <laughs> quickly the little playthrough of the Sierra game, and it's like, yeah, there's all the major beats. There's there all the it stuff. is, and there's the ending where they, the four of them walk off into the sunset. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess it kind of did turn out pretty much as as I feared at the start. It really was, like, there's a reason why it's sort of a forgotten Disney movie, and, and again, I can see why it's some people's cult favorite as well, because, uh, I mean, if I had to pick a favorite Disney movie off the top of my head... I don't even know because it was Robin Hood and then we we rewatched Robin Hood and I realized it wasn't that good. Like I don't really have one. So hey, why not be this one? That's fine. But it definitely it's not like you're going to go back and unearth this amazing gem <laughs> that everyone forgot about. It's just a normal Disney movie. It's like whatever. Oh, I'd pick Bambi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean probably. Again, I haven't seen that in a long time either. I guess uh, one thing though I don't like about Disney in general, this movie was full of it, is I don't like when they pull at your heartstrings and you know this movie was always like oh this guy uh, I don't like this little creepy monster thing oh but now he's uh, my friend and oh no now he's noble sacrifice just blah 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 and Bambi is the grandfather of that shit (laughs) it is oh yeah Bambi just just tears your heart out when (laughs) when when mother deer gets killed at the beginning and Bambi has to go it alone yeah I mean I just uh it just I, I don't mind when it feels earned but I don't like when I feel like a uh, movie's just yanking at my emotions just for the sake of it. And, uh, I mean, Bambi certainly didn't earn it. It's the first scene. It's your mom getting killed by a hunter. By it's like, some what rotten, the hell? evil human. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, I mean, uh, effective, well done, but I don't like oh, that Oh, yeah, feeling. they jumped right in there. They didn't wait until well into the movie to try to do it. They just got you right from the get go yeah but i mean this uh, i mean it's the same with all disney movies like when people use the term disneyfication or disneyified it's it's fair it is true everyone is same thing we said last week with snow white either you're good or you're bad there's yeah. no middle ground Yeah, there's no middle ground there's no gray area for anybody you're evil or you're perfect but apparently uh disney once again has reacquired the rights to this book series and they might make a live action series or something and hey maybe it'll turn out better See the other the other Disney famous movies like like Cinderella, Snow White, etc., etc., etc. They're all based on old fairy tales from well the Grimm brothers, you know, seventeen eighteen hundreds. This one's based on a book written in the nineteen sixties. It might not have the same substance as those old fairy tales, which everybody knows long before you see the movie. Yeah, and even just, yeah, there's those basic, again, it's like last week where it's like, it's better not to overthink it. Like, why are the dwarves, why do they have a gem mine that no one else seems to care about? But it's similar here of like, 
like the uh, the kid just walked to the the lair of the evil king in like an afternoon. How is it that close to his his pig shack? That doesn't even make sense on a basic level. Yeah, and there were other things like I mentioned that minstrel who was strung up, and the little guy comes or whoever, however they got loose, but he's still hanging when he's first arrested. He's still hanging by a by one of the ropes while the other two take off, and the next thing you know, he's with them. Well, how the heck did he get loose? Yeah, he was tied up there. Just little things like that, like, yeah, explain it. Like, I'm not that stupid. I can't figure that. Well, I guess I am. I can't figure out how he got loose. Yeah, and it's all fairly little stuff. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of it, I think, too, is, like, we just started really drifting off. We just weren't paying attention. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, like, little stuff all the way through. And there's really no point where it's, like, oh, they nailed that scene. It's just all just yeah. kind of whatever. Like, how did they, and you're at, yeah, constantly saying, how did they get there? Who's that person? Why did, oh, that light beam that that they was with the princess. What the hell was that all about? And then it disappeared for the longest while, and then all of a sudden it was there again. But, yeah, I think that's one thing that's like a, a, a downside to adapting something is like, you just put stuff in because it's in the story, but if you weren't adapting a story, you would never do these things. It just, well, you better explain why they're going to be there or don't put them in at all because the light beam didn't have... Well, I guess it did have to be there because it led them out of the prison. Which somehow. again, yeah, they guess she was just moving bricks around and just walking around the castle freely anyway. Not much of a prison, <laughs> you know. It's like, oh, you helped. We wouldn't have escaped without you. And it's like, I think you would have, yeah, princess. Yeah, I think you would have. You were just walking around wherever you wanted. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, a lot of times, uh, I don't know, when we don't like something, I sort of try to couch it a little of like, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to just shit on something that is somebody's favorite or whatever, but I just don't feel the need to do that in this case, because if this is your favorite Disney movie, like, get over it. <laughs> you know, this movie yeah. does have problems. Yeah, go watch a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's neat. It's neat that it's the forgotten one, and it's the obscure one and whatever, but it's nothing special. It's just another. It's just... Yeah. It, and not only is it nothing special, it's, it's like... Well, like when we watched Robin Hood and we learned that it turns out the 70s was a bad time for Disney. Their, their movies just weren't as good as they had been. So this just feels like a holdover of that. This is just a continuation of that bad streak. And then in 1989, Little Mermaid came out and everything was fucking great again. <laughs> but this was, this is clearly still during their slump. And uh, yeah, I mean, you have a, a decade long general bad time. Then you spend $44 million for no reason on this one movie. No wonder Disney had, uh, was in financial peril, but you know. Now it all worked out because Disney owns everything, so congrats, you guys, you did it.